Hey everybody, yeah. <laughs> yes, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. I'm a AdWords manager. And as always, I'm joined by a guy who, when he walks through the mall, is uh -oh. propositioned to be an Abercrombie and Fitch early oh, 2000s gosh. stand outside the store with minimal clothes on model <laughs> slash employee even at his advanced age the ageless mm. chris mm. schaefer who's not only an adwords manager like myself but an adwords trainer he'll get your accounts in shape chris how's it going you were telling me how busy you are before the show um mm -hmm. everything going good as we're uh, recording on this thursday yeah you know for some reason uh it seems like uh november when it comes when it comes to november everybody wants to get everything in and finished and kind of going quick. And then suddenly December comes around and everybody just kind of disappears for a month. You know, it's like, Oh, it's almost December. Go, go, go. And then, okay. All right. It's December. I'm going to disappear for a while. So yeah, it's the hustle bustle before the, before the Christmas holidays. Oh, well, I know, I know you're, you would be busy if you, uh, you know, if you answer to email every now and then, but uh, I, I, that's, that's your choice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh chris i don't know if you ever use gmail but there's this great setting that you can filter emails right to spam so i've got it set up to any email that comes from you goes right to spam because i don't Straight need to, to look spam. at that's useless that's what it is information so <laughs> hey everybody welcome i thought back you liked from... those forwards those 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 forwards of the uh you know the, the chain letter forwards i guess i'll stop sending them i guess you don't like them no no keep sending them um, I'll, I'll just put up the spam. So yeah, guys, uh, thanks for listening to the show today. Um, today we, uh, we ate up all the steak off this bone and we are throwing you all a bone. But before I get into what the episode's about, I want to first thank today's sponsor, Directive Consulting, the go-to B2B and enterprise search marketing, search engine marketing agency, SEO, PPC, content. They do landing pages comprehensive strategies to help you explode your lead volume and drop your cost per lead. You can get a free custom proposal at directiveconsulting.com and we thank them for supporting the show. So Chris, like I was saying, today we're throwing a bone to a good portion of our audience. We've done yeah. how to manage AdWords accounts um, for people who manage them, agency employees, freelancers, business owners. But today we're talking specifically to the agency employees, the freelancers out there who manage a lot of accounts and for a lot of people chris a lot means six or five uh we get questions mm -hmm. all the time like how do you manage multiple accounts my boss just threw six accounts on me i have no idea what i'm doing um chris and i obviously can manage a lot more but that's because we know a lot of things about how to manage a lot of accounts so chris Today, we're going to share some of the secrets. We're going to help people out. Um, give me some thoughts on what inspired this episode. How did you learn this stuff? Did you read a book? Or was it stuff that you just gained through your many years of experience? Um, well, it was actually uh, started with a question coming straight from our website, paidsearchpodcast.com. I got a question from someone saying, hey, I know you guys have talked about it before, but, you know, always great to get new insights. And so I thought, Hey, it's, it's probably been close to a year since we talked about this and we're always learning. Jason and I are always talking behind the scenes and, you know, sharing insights on stuff like this. And I thought, Oh, let's bring it up. Let's talk about it. Let's get it out in the open. Cause I know that there are some of you guys out there um, that are either part of an agency or, you know, trying to start your own business, uh, doing AdWords, uh, you know, you, you would love to get some of these insights. And I honestly, Jason, I wish I had something like this to listen to, you know, uh, almost 10 years ago when I started, because it was really difficult to get these questions answered and, and to think, think objectively about what I need to do and not just subjectively about what I'm, you know, what's good for me, but think about the decisions I'm making for my business. Um, how does that affect the way the client sees things, how I interact with the client? You know, you need to think outside of just that little box you're working inside of. And, uh, you know, 
how, how client interactions change the way you, you, you talk to them, how the decisions you make can waste your time and eat up a ton of time. And, uh, you know, things like things that always catch you by surprise, like reporting and emails from clients and things like that, you know, how that can really put a kink into things if you don't know how to handle them properly. So I'm excited, uh, you know, Hey, uh, I feel, I, I feel like we should start a Patreon for the, for the amazing, uh, amazing details we give for free. You know, I feel like I should, why would you want just to start a Patreon? You I don't, I don't, I'm not but it's just, it feels like that's what everybody does. You know, as soon as they give something away, they start a Patreon and they're like, support me. I don't really want to, but I feel like that's what most people would do, you know? Yeah, it's good content, but you know, um, I think that just shows how, I don't know, like, um, we're not here for that, you know, no, um, just here not. to, here to help. And, uh, um, I don't know about this Patreon thing. Um, I, I can tell you this, Chris. I'm a huge podcast fan of many podcasts and YouTube channels and all that. <sighs> Never joined a Patreon. Um, oh, you so, haven't? Uh, no, have you? Well, yeah, I have. I've supported YouTube channels. You know, when the when the ad apocalypse came by and a lot of people just lost revenue, and you know, people are having to shift to try and you know keep their content. If I support someone's content, if I really enjoy it and I watch it religiously, um, you know, every day, every time it comes out. Yeah, I've I've joined several uh, Patreons at small levels, you know, whatever I think is appropriate for what I interact with to help them out. So I don't know, but I've done that no, too, guys. I've, I've, I've joined we're some not Patreons. On that level. Yeah, we're our po we're not ready for that, but you know, I've joined some Patreons too, just because it's the right thing to do. Like if I if I see a podcaster or YouTube who's doing good work and I want to support them, I'll I'll join a Patreon too. So I've done that yeah. too, Chris. Um, so Chris, yeah. just a, just a perfect example for everybody of, of the kind of insights we're going to go over today. Um, th this one's a micro example, Chris. Um, I think you'll be familiar with it and it'll hit home. Just telling clients about the green display URL and how the display URL is only for display mm. purposes. It's not actually where the ads are going when someone clicks on the ad. How many emails and calls have you gotten yeah. with clients freaking out going, that's not a real link on my website. And then you take five minutes to respond and send the email. Think of all the stress and time you could save if you just tell them up front. So that's the kind of insights we want to give you guys. And um, we're going to start off with client management, not managing the AdWords account, not sending reporting, not doing builds, not managing your own time, managing clients. Um, Chris, the first tip we have here is to fire crazy clients. <laughs> um, so we're trying to help people make money. And the first thing we're telling them in the short term is to make less money. Not make as much mm -hmm. money, but you know what, Chris? There's this thing when you're starting out an agency, starting out as a freelancer, where any money looks like shiny new money, and it all looks the yeah. same. But that's not true. What you'll quickly find out is that crazy people don't change. People don't change in general, and crazy people don't change. And those kind of people that think it's okay to like email you at like two in the morning and expect a response. Mm -hmm. People who think it's okay to call you on Sunday at 6 p.m. for an account that spends $1,000 a month um, mm. when you make yourself available during the work week like normal business. People who, no matter how many times you tell them about search terms or conversions, don't get it and they think there's some other magical thing, they're crazy people. And they're going to take up more time <laughs> than you charge them. And Chris, we've talked to, I'll keep it private, but we talked to one of the biggest AdWords manager kind of people in the game behind the scenes. Um, yeah. And it was not someone who I would expect to say a thing like this, but he, when we were talking business strategy with him, he said, uh, you know, some clients just aren't worth it. Um, they're not worth the a-hole fee. And he actually used the full <laughs> word. And I put my hands over my ears yes. because he's a dad. <laughs> he's a dad. And he's not someone I would expect to say that, but he said it. Yeah. Chris. And I was he like, wow, yeah. even the guy who comes off like that, the most professional of all professionals still talks in that kind of language about these kind of people because they're that bad. And any, any insights on these a-holes, Chris, any insights on crazy people? Have you made mistakes keeping them on? I know you have, cause you're such a nice guy. It's like every month I hear you agonizing about trying to let someone go. And get, what, what's yeah. your insight well, on this topic? This is a, this is a very timely discussion. Uh, I didn't choose the first point that you came up with here. 
Um, but uh, you don't choose it, anything it is, with the show, Chris. Just no, so I, I don't. I, I just I'm I just ride coattails you're here. Just, you're just what we call you on the the show pony, <laughs> the Pegasus or whatever those things are called, where where it's half man, oh, half gosh. human. Um, the trophy model, the Abercrombie trophy and Fitch man. model, the Tropicana mm. drinks girl, that's, the Red Bull girl. That's you, okay? <laughs> well, good. Yeah, thank carry you. On. Carry on because I'm thank saying you, carry on. You're allowed to carry on. <laughs> well, th- uh, I, I'll try and reach your level on my comments um, as a show pony. But um, oh, that so, one hurts, doesn't it, Chris? Uh, I'll take yeah, it back. It I take it back. I take it back. I'm, okay. I'm genuinely sorry. I said that. Carry on. <laughs> Um, so I just last week had, I let go a client that I've been with for a year and a half pays. I looked at my, my invoicing system pays typically within one day. Invoices are paid within one day for the past year and a half or more. Um, and I, I sent an email just and said, I can no longer provide the service that you want. Um, I can no longer uh, do you know what it is you're hiring me for? And basically, the reasoning, and this leads to the second point, is is this: um, they are setting arbitrary goals that inhibits my ability to work towards my goal. They get upset when the click through rate drops. They get upset when the cost per click um, is too high for their comfort. Um, I tell them, listen, we, you know, we have an issue with budget and I can't reach anything. And then they're like, why did, con- you know, why did conversions drop 15% last month? And I said, well, I mean, I'm struggling to get enough clicks to keep it going, but you know, you're adding, you're adding more geographic area to, to what I'm, what I'm, what I'm targeting. You're adding more keywords. You're forcing me to broaden you know, my search to, to you lay in bed and you come up with some stupid new keyword and decide you want to throw it my way and say, advertise on this. Then you search for it and you're mad because you don't see it. These arbitrary goals, I want more clicks. Uh, the click-through rate's too low. The cost per click's too high. These things inhibit my goal. And the goal that, I mean, unless there is some campaign that you establish up front that this campaign does not meet the normal goals, Every other campaign, 99% of your clients, 95% of your clients should be uh, sticking to this goal, uh, quality over quantity. I mean, that's what the game is right. in AdWords. I can get you thousands and thousands of clicks and they can be absolute crap. Believe me, I've seen plenty of campaigns that are doing it. They're very proud of how many clicks they're getting for one cent, 10 cents, 15 cents, and, and they think they're super successful. Right. Um, but in reality, it's about quality. That's why AdWords is successful is because you can grind it out and get great quality. So arbitrary goals will keep you from that primary goal of quality. And, and that's, and the, I had to let him go. And it the, was the reason it, it was a crazy I mean, it, situation. This sounds like a somewhat normal situation, at least within one instance, because a lot of clients need to be educated on AdWords. And that's, I think, yes. but you classified him in the quote unquote crazy client category because I'm assuming this conversation went on for a year, emails back and forth, calls back constant, and forth, yes. stress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It, it was and a th- constant thing. And and let me let me let me talk. So that's what you don't want. So let me address quickly how do you fix that? And the answer that I've discovered is you always go back to the core answer every time. It's just like every time someone asks us about Skags, it's like, okay, here's here's my bit. I'm gonna say the same thing every time. And when they push on one thing, you always go back to, let's talk about conversions, let's talk about quality, let's not talk about you know in- increasing G. It always has to go through the filter of conversions, quality, and okay, that's, overall improvement that's, that's of, good the, advi- of the traffic. That's good advice good advice about how to deal with that situation. I'm going to challenge you on that because you used the word, you used the word fix. You didn't fix it. It was unfixable because crazy is not fixable. <laughs> right. So that wasn't, yeah. That's if your if your everyday fixes don't work and it keeps going and going and going, then that goes in the crazy client category. And the only true fix is to fire that client and move on and, and have someone else yeah. pay you money. And right? there you go. And then, and, Jason, you've done it, right? You've done it before? 
Um, oh yeah. I mean, I'm okay. I'm very, uh, so, uh, I've, I've from day, like I went, I learned it. I didn't, I wasn't born with it and I, I wasn't good at it the first six yeah. months of my business, but I, that uh, we've talked about this before. That is, uh, that is a serious skill that I have to pick out those yes. kind of people and a avoid them and B, if I make a mistake and engage with them, cut them off and be, and these people are crazy by the way. So when you try to fire someone, it's not like, okay, you know, you're right. I was being a little irrational. Um, I appreciate your point of view and no. good luck in the future. No, it's no page long emails coming back to you, calling you the worst things in the world. Uh, yes. And I won't get into it, but really bad things. And cause they're crazy people. So crazy comes in many colors, many characters, many versions of crazy. Chris and I can't, I mean, we have our different experiences on what certain AdWords clients' flaws are that make them in that category, unfixable, unworkable, to the point where it's not profitable for you to deal with them, either through stress or through time. But all we can say in in the for this episode is crazy is like the Supreme Court said about uh, the, the Supreme Court justice said about adult films or pornography. I'll know it when I see it. So hmm. you have to develop that internal gut feeling. You'll know it when you see it. You, Chris and I at this point, can, we, we can hear it when we hear it, just in, in right. terms of someone talking. One of my common um, uh, catches that I've heard is anybody who calls you, Chris, and you've dealt with this, who cusses with you. Like before the show, I'll cuss with you all the time, Chris, because we, we've gotten to know each other. I'll say some of the dirtiest darkest things you could imagine and use cuss words but i'm not going to do that on on a, a podcast i'm not going to do it on the paid search will i do it on the q a show yeah i'll do it on the q and i'm not going to do it on the paid search podcast i'm not going to do it with clients because we're engaged in business we're professionals so anybody right. who uses like drops an s-bomb or an f-bomb on your first conversation with them on the phone i found that to be a sign of a reckless uh, yes. person who at least can't even fake being a professional person during the first phone call. So there's tons of things you can develop, but it comes in many different looks and views and all that kind of stuff. But Chris, going back to what you said about setting arbitrary goals, my version of that to help with client management, my next tip, always get a client to focus on one goal. That's all you can do with, with an AdWords yep. management. It's truly, there's so many people that have a one track mind that you just have to focus on one goal. And most of the time, the goal is the right goal. It's get me the most leads for the lowest cost per lead possible. That's it. Now, sometimes conversion tracking can't get set up fully or doesn't track everything. So we focus on another great one goal of perfect search terms. But there's some clients that get hung up on click-through rate. Some clients that get hung up on cost per click. Sometimes clients yeah. that get hung up on volume. and what I've developed, Chris, is a strategy of, hey, I'm going to try to get you the most leads possible for the budget as the primary goal, my goal. I'm going to try to get you perfect search terms, my goal, the primary goal. But if certain clients just have hangups about a certain statistic, I'll move that to the primary goal and I'll do what they want after trying to coach them. So I'll try to coach them up on what the true goal should be. But in terms of managing clients, if someone gets hung up on a goal, I'll go with them. If I can't change them and I'll, I'll help them achieve that goal while still trying to do the primary goal of the most leads and great search terms, but I'll still let their irrationality about one specific goal um, kind of change the management if if they're just not changeable. That's that's one tip I have in terms of managing clients. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Jason, we got I think one of the things that that really drives a lot of people um crazy is that day-to-day -day management, which is our next topic, time management. Um, so I want to talk about how you and I can get through day-to-day -day work with, you know, an undisclosed number of clients and that we're managing and it's difficult to do. Um, but first let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor, Directive Consulting, the B2B search marketing agency. Today, we've got a growth story for you from eSub, a product project management SaaS company, specifically for subcontractors. Even though eSub had incredible customer retention, they struggled with growth. Being a niche service, they discovered that there was very little demand for their service on Google. This is something that I see all the time. 
And this is a real problem for niche service companies. So they hired Directive Consulting, the B2B search engine, search marketing agency to help them with this challenge. After refining their targeting, one, pre-qualifying their clicks with precise ad copy, two, and developing custom landing pages, three, Directive Consulting was able to increase eSub's marketing qualified leads by 71%. All of this while decreasing their cost per lead by 65%. Jason and I are sure that they can get these kind of results for you too. Go to directiveconsulting.com and request a totally free custom proposal. And hey, be sure and tell them their friends at Paid Search Podcast sent you there. All right, Jason. So let's talk a little bit about time management. This is this is what I would refer to as the grind, getting up on a Tuesday and looking at those accounts that you have looked at unknown number of times. I mean, just, you know, you know what's going to be there. You've seen it. You've checked on it so many times. I mean, how do you consist? I mean, what do you look at? Because at some points, uh, you just aren't even sure where to go or what to look at. I know for me, my first tip is this, have a repeating to-do list. I like to have, I have a, a piece of software that I use called Things, T-H-I-N-G-S, Things. It's on Mac and it's just a software that helps me track what clients I need to check today, uh, things like that. And, and I can put things into rotation and it always pops up. And I know, oh, today's Tuesday, I need to check this, this, this. Some people might want to use spreadsheets. There's lots of options. I'm not going to tell you that my, my, my software is the best. The idea is to just get a system. That's the idea. Time management is going to be an important aspect because if you don't have a system, you will eat up time. You'll spend two hours clicking around and you didn't really accomplish anything. You just kind of looked at metrics and you jumped from thing to thing and you looked at what you looked at yesterday, but you forgot about those accounts that you haven't looked at in two weeks. Right. So you need some organization. You need some structure. And um, I'll tell you, um, Jason, I'm sure you have some tips on what people can look at. But I know for me, I have like, you know, kind of my holy trinity of things that I look at. I look at uh, search terms. I look at conversions. I look at analytics. Um, you know, I look at I look at certain metrics that tells me, you know, how is this trending up, down? You know, it, and, and again, going back to our first discussion in client management, it's always going to be centered around quality. I'm not going to center it. I'm not going to be super concerned if clicks go down a lot, you know, because clicks can go down. I'm going to see both of us, Jason, you and I are going to see clicks drop in about 30 days. They're going to start going down and down and down. And then suddenly they're going to shoot back up in January. It's the time of year. And if you're concerned about clicks, you're going to have a failure at certain times of the year because seasonally things change. But if it's always on quality, you can always focus on quality. Quality will not change. You can always get better quality. Volume is not always there. So that's my uh, that's my tip for time management is to get that system, get something in place, and follow it. Follow it. Yeah. Jason, what you got? Chris, um, it's time management's one of the hardest things in the world. Um, the 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 days when I finish the day and I'm the saddest and in like the most just sad mood and I feel like I let I just feel like a loser are the days mm -hmm. when I let the day take control of me and I didn't take control yes. of the day and Absolutely. with technology with emails phone calls text messages some a bot co-workers if you're in an agency um, I'm not gonna say a word but message systems instant message systems in the office which apparently are a thing now there's so many ways to to get distracted and let the day take take you over. So one client emails in and the next thing you know, you're on their account for an hour and a half and you didn't do your management for your other accounts. So my biggest right. takeaway, Chris, is just like you said, have a system um, for management. I, I have a weekly management checklist. We do the same things every week. It's not sexy. 
I'm not going to, I can't no. sell a book on yeah. it. I can barely put a blog article about it. I'm not, but it, but it works. <laughs> I do the same things over and over. It's, it's a checklist and the word checklist is important. You have to, so someone might say, well, I'm never going to forget to look at search terms. I'm never going to forget to look at problem keywords. I'm never going to forget to test new ads. Well, you're human and humans forget all the time. So you have to have a checklist in place. My checklist is very simple, uh, but it works. Um, another tip is to work in a silo. Um, don't worry about other people. Don't worry about what the group lunch plans are. Uh, don't mm. do emails. Don't do message systems. Don't do meetings. When it's time for management work, it's time for management work. Put on your some whatever kind of music you like. Put on a podcast, whatever. Put on this podcast. But do the but be alone and 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 don't manage an account and then go talk to your coworkers. Don't manage an account and then send emails. Manage accounts over and over and over in a row, doing your checklist one after the other for each account. I found that works just getting in the management mindset. Um, and then my biggest tip, Chris, is when you're doing this weekly process, the number one flaw I've seen other managers make, and you don't make this because of the way I heard you talk about it. You talked about, I look at trends, I look at the overview, I focus on results. I know you don't make this mistake because of hearing you say that but a lot of people make this mistake. They get so drilled down on the checklist, on checking boxes off, they don't take a 30,000 foot view of the account. They don't look at how the cost per conversion is doing this month versus last month. And then you send out that monthly report and the client goes, whoa, why did my cost per conversion go up by 200%? Because, and, and then you feel bad because you're like, hey, I work so hard on this account. I'm in it every single week spending, doing all this work, but, you get so bogged down on that checklist, you forget to do the overall yeah. thing of, of how is it actually going? Are we spending the full budget? Are we getting conversions? That kind of stuff. So checklist is important, but here's, here's the thing, Chris, about managing lots of accounts. Sometimes you can do a lot of work that doesn't take a lot of time. So mm -hmm. you going through 40 different keywords and figuring out if you need to up bids by 10 or 5% when Google controls the bids anyway, because enhanced CPC, that's not really effective, but you going out <laughs> and point. finding one, spending 30 minutes playing around with Google searches, finding one new great phrase or broad match modified search, that's going to pick up a ton of quality and a ton of volume that can make a huge difference. So the yeah. longer I have an account, Chris, the quicker and quicker my week-to-week -week management goes in terms of what I have to do, in terms of search terms, adding negatives, my goal is to never have to add a negative because the search terms are perfect after six weeks, you know? But the, you can still take the time to kind of work outside the box and, and focus on that one thing that's going to really actually move the needle. So using the checklist, but not getting, not becoming a slave to the checklist, I think is kind of my uh, overall takeaway and just, but the checklist up front is important. You got to do the same things every week. You got to have structure. Structure is, is the most important thing with time management. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, um, I feel, I feel like you and I uh, do this very well because our personalities fit to a certain thing. You and I can repeat the same day. We can repeat the same tasks and we like to be structured and organized and what we do, if you are not that person, if you if you tend to be someone who uh, likes to do things on a whim, you know you don't want every day to be the same kind of thing. If you don't like a lot of repetitive stuff, you 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 adhor doing boring things. You need to to set that mindset aside for something like this. You need to be structured because if you aren't structured in everything you do, from your account builds to your management to your client communications it will fall apart. That's I, I think that's one of the things that has been most critical uh, lesson for me to learn is I can't treat this over here different than this other one because I'll make errors. I'll screw up. I'll get confused and it won't work. I have to be structured about everything I do. So follow the plan and stick to it. Jason, next, I feel, I feel like we have to address the thing that, that throws a monkey wrench every month uh, or every, you know, every, every day depends on how often it comes along, but campaign builds number three here is, is what really throws a monkey wrench into everything. When you get a new client, okay, 
right? And you get that cha-ching, right? Done. You got, you just sold a new client, but uh uh-oh, here comes, here comes the work. You got it. Yeah. You got to, you got to do that account build. You got to follow up what you just pitched them on. You got to follow up and deliver. So I really have, I mean, we've, I don't think there was anything I need to talk about in account builds because we have harped and harped on how to build accounts and what kind of keywords. I mean, go listen to all the other hundreds of episodes, but here's, here's one thing I don't think I've ever mentioned. I do account builds first thing in the morning. When, when I am the freshest, when I know I can get it done, I say, I'm going to get this done on Friday. And uh, I like to finish things early. So if it's Thursday morning, I might have a ton of emails and other things I need to do in the day. But when I am freshest, when I am focused, I don't sit down and start answering emails. I build that first account. I build that account out. And often I will take it piece by piece. If they have you know, a couple different geographic areas and you know, something like that. I will take one build at a time. I'll do a search build and I'll do everything except for ads. And then the next morning I might do just the ads and then I finish out the display campaign. Um, do it when you're fresh. Don't leave it to four o'clock in the afternoon oh, when no. you're tired oh, no. and, and, and cry, those Chris. emails are going to start dinging like crazy. Though I, I swear, it seems like everybody gets together at 4.30 and is like, hey, let's send a bunch of emails and screw everybody's day. I mean, that's just usually what happens. And you're going to be building a campaign at that time. So that's that's my number one tip for, tip for campaign builds. Do it when you're fresh. You need to really devote time. And Jason, you just set a perfect example there. Turn on some music, get in your zone, and grind through it. And then you're done. You can have lunch that day and know that you just finished yeah. a build and you're, you're done ahead of time. Chris, um, just to add on to that, I might have an investing podcast that might be called uh-huh. After Dinner Investing that I Uh-oh. might talk about a guy named Ben Graham on there who might have a concept <laughs> called the margin of safety. Margin of safety, Chris, it's a, it's a good investing concept, but the way it relates to uh, the real world is, hey, if you build a bridge that can take uh, 30 tons of weight, um, you're not gonna. You're not going to say that um, you can run a, a truck over it that weighs 28 tons, because yeah, we built it for 30 tons, but yeah, that 28 is less than 30. But hey, do we really want to test that out in the real world? That's a little too close. So we're going to have a margin of safety and say that the limit is 20 tons that can go on this bridge, and that way anyone who goes on it will be way under 30 tons and you're giving yourself a margin of safety. So the way this relates to campaign or new account builds is I used to fill up my calendar. Okay. I'll do the build in the morning management after in the afternoon, or I've got these three builds. I've scheduled them today. Oh, I've blocked off the whole day for quote unquote builds. I'll be fine. No, no, no. It never mm-hmm. works, Chris. It never <laughs> works. It, it always takes yeah. way longer than expected. And uh, I've, got, I've just got nightmare stories about going over my time limit. So I would say build in a significant margin of safety. So if you got a build coming up, start it at eight in the morning and just say, that's what you're doing that day. Um, or that's if you think it's going to take you two hours, block off six hours um, because builds have a way of just not going as smoothly as you thought margin of safety. Um, and then my, my last two tips, Chris, are always get the same information from, from clients when it comes to new accounts. Anyone can go to my website. I'm not hiding it. I have a get started form. I ask every client the same information. And I think everybody who does a lot of builds should do that as well. Your agency should have a standardized form. And that way, you know what to look, look for when you're going down your instructions. You get the instructions. They fill out the form. You get your instructions as opposed to cobbling a bunch of notes together or something. And then finally, don't overdo it on the builds. Start small. You can always add on as long as you build mm, things in a scalable excellent. way. Is, is scagging yeah. a scalable way? Probably not. <laughs> But no. it's building out 10 to 12 ad groups to similar keywords a scalable way. I think so. Yeah. Is having your, so. your campaign level site links and call outs and call extension all that can apply to any ad group. Yeah, that's scalable. So it's mm-hmm. all about being scalable. So you don't have to build out the world's biggest account right away. Start small, get the basics right, but make sure you build it in, in something that can scale. 
Um, and I, I found that to be a very effective way. And, and you just have to remind yourself not to overdo it on the builds because the clients don't see them. All they see is when they search for the oh, keywords that's... and tell them not to, they see the ads. That's something I learned from you, Chris, is to think, put yourself in the client shoes. All they can see are the ads. So yeah. if it takes 10 keywords for them to see every search they want to see, why do 1,000 if, if you can get it done in 10? So just having that mindset mm -hmm. of building small but scalable. Yeah, excellent. Good advice there. So Jason, um, monkey wrench number two, every month, first of the month, middle of the month, whenever you do your reporting, uh, that's going to be a real issue. Um, now, there's a lot of ways that people do reporting. There's dashboards. Jason and I both do, um, at the moment, um, we both do um, emailed reports. Um, number one, you need a reporting software. Uh, we both use and recommend Optimizer. Uh, you, you can find it. it. Don't search it because you won't find it. It's, it's spelled weird. <laughs> Go to our website, Paid Search Podcast. We have a link under uh, PPC tools or PPC res resources, um, find it there. That's what we both use. We like it. Believe me, I think together, Jason and I have tried like five or six, maybe different reporting systems and different things over the years. Uh, that's our favorite so far. Yeah. Uh, and, and we actually came to that decision separately and they do not pay us to say this. Just, I mean, no, we not, pay them. That's, that's true. That's true. We do we, not. We that's an excellent them, point. We promote them too. So <laughs> it's an excellent point. We both pay our monthly we're being, yearly we're being fees. Negative paid just for like this. every. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're losing money for saying this. But anyway, um, we. I mean, we're honest guys. We give our honest thoughts, and there's nothing going on behind the scenes. We do enjoy uh, that uh, that reporting software. Um, one thing I'll say about reports, however you do it. I do, we'd have to have a whole discussion about reporting. I, I think maybe two people would probably find it interesting, but so I'd skip, I'll skip all that to say this, however you do it, it needs to be efficient. I think, I think that's probably the best answer. Say, should I do this? Sure. Can you repeat it and it be done quickly and not kill an entire week for you? Yeah. Um, uh, then do it. Quick example. I used to write detailed, gorgeous, uh, 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 bullet points and essays on all my clients back when I had like 15 clients. Uh, and it took me a tremendous amount of time until one day, one of my best clients been with me forever told me, Chris, I never read that. And he was one of my best ones. He had been with me the longest. And he's like, if I want to take a nap, I, I read it, you know? And uh, that was an eye opener. And I suddenly realized this is not a, an efficient way to communicate. If they want to, they can contact me and find out questions. But unless they are curious, they're not going to. And why would I spend 30 minutes, an hour, you know, on everyone doing these detailed write ups? Um, expectations are different for every client. So yeah. be efficient in the way that you do it. Um, Chris, my only comment, I agree with everything you said. Um, my only tip for everyone is to understand that um, reporting is like a boomerang. You throw something out into the world and whatever you throw out, it's coming back at you. So understand what you put in your report is going to affect what happens with your client. So mm. what an example of that, Chris. Um, Okay, let me let me put it in more general, everyday, common man terms that I wrote down here. Reporting is uh -oh. a boomerang. Don't throw out S that doesn't matter that's going to come back and F you with lots of inquiries that don't matter. Example, Gosh. me putting location maps with bugs on it didn't help led to problems. So one example of that, Chris, is I uh, there's this map feature. It's so fancy. It's so cool. I was like, oh, clients would love seeing where their clicks come from on a map. Well, that, mm -hmm. that map feature is not like the maps we see online, it's not perfect. And so they, they clump pieces of data into large locations. And then sometimes someone actually will be in Dallas, but for whatever reason, when Google talks to the software and the software talks to the PDF or whatever, it puts the person in Salt Lake City. And so I was sending this out <laughs> to clients and yes, we're getting our locations right, but the way it would, it would put it on the map is, hey, all your clicks came from Dallas and Fort Worth, but it would have this big dot for the Dallas-Fort Worth area centered over like 
70 miles east of Dallas and clients would be like, why are <laughs> right. my clicks coming from east of Dallas? I'm like, well, they're not. They're actually coming from Dallas. Now I've got to go into your account and pull out the user data and show you where the users were located. But it's a system right. that puts it on the map there. And because I was throwing something out at them, it boomeranged and came back at me because I didn't put myself in their shoes. And they just, they don't know that I've got the location set up perfectly, because I do. They just see the map and the map looks weird. The map looks not perfect. So it was coming back at me. There's tons of ways that can happen. So just understand anything you put out there will come back at you. So if you put on your report, search IS, you're gonna get questions that take up your time that say, hey, what's mm -hmm. search IS? But if you put on there search impression share with an asterisk and then you have an asterisk that says search impression share means blah, 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 blah. And you explain it to them because that's a term most people don't know about that won't come back at you. So understand what you throw out there will have consequences. And I've had to learn that um, the hard way, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, last thing. I know we're, we're running long here, but I, th I think this is probably one of the most important. And I have two things that I've learned in my 10 years of, of doing this as self-employed. Um, number one, we're going to talk about, uh, oh, so by the way, the, the point is communication. Sorry, I, I didn't I didn't set it up. We're talking about communication, communication specifically with clients. OK, um, number one, my number one tip is avoiding tons of emails and getting into a loop of just back and forth, back and forth. When you communicate, you need to communicate effectively. I've found uh, many tools that that help me do this. One thing you might want to consider when you write emails, use bullet points. Be concise when you when you communicate. Um, if bullet points don't work and you need to really make an impact and help them understand what you're talking about, find a tool out there where you can record your screen and your voice and show what you're talking about. I cannot Snag tell you how many times I've I've used this. Yeah, I, there's there's I I, I, I use I, um, snag it. It's a it's a good app yeah. for the Mac. Mac. I use I use Jump Share um, is something that I use and I pay for you know the premium and again we're not paid for saying this we're just sharing uh, ideas here but you wouldn't you won't believe Jason I'm sure you could say as well uh, how many times you get reactions of people saying oh that's great they love the fact that they can hear me and see my account and or see their account and have me explain what's happening they're like. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. No more emails. They're not yeah. doubting what you're saying because they can see it. So effective communication with those tools. It's it's 2018, guys. I mean, come on, use the tools that are out there. Last one I'll say is always keep notes and write, write details about what the client says. Goals, what did they state in their, their initial setup form? Because two years down the line, you might need to you know uh, Cover reference that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, George, you said you wanted three conversions a month. I mean, we've gotten you six for the past 12 months. You know, it's like, oh, OK, we need to adjust that. You know, so all kinds of things. Keep notes on budgets and changes that you've made, notes about calls that you made. Keep a dedicated spot for that because uh, it's a little monotonous, but you'll find yourself doing it as a habit. And you will you will be so glad that you have it in the future because it will be a a a but saber uh, in the uh, in the future when it comes down to it. So that's it for me. Good good uh, tips, Chris, on communication. I think um, emails. If you had an internal rule that you, an email you send can never be longer than a a tweet um, with the new limits on tweets that are longer. <laughs> I think that's a good rule. And one way you can do that mm. is, like you said, is the video. The video, snag it or whatever. Jump 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 the. I don't know. Up, jump, 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 jump share. Kid Rock Bob with the bar, the bang, the bang. <laughs> jump share. Up, jump share. The book, Bob. Um, bang, the bang, Diddy. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, Chris, the video thing, I can't, we can't put into words how much that matters because what we know about AdWords, uh, Google Ads, we're very good at communicating it. We can write it out, we can talk it out. That's what we do every week, but it takes a ton of time. And for people who are not, advanced with Google ads, even if you put it out perfectly, they still won't get it a lot of the time. So if you can put it in a video, it's such a perfect thing. It's such a perfect thing. So I think that's a great thing. Um, and then another tip, um, Chris, is to give the people options. So you'll get tons of incoming from clients, phone calls, emails. And my strategy is that I give them options. So we're, we're, we don't do this open-ended, never-ending 
saga of back and forth. They tell me they mm -hmm. want more clicks. I tell them, here are your options. Multiple choice, blank, blank, blank. So if someone says, I want more traffic, I don't go, hmm, what kind of traffic would you want? Or how much traffic do you want? I go, okay, our search impression share due to budget, loss due to budget is 20%. So we can increase the budget by 20%. You can get 20 more clicks. Do you like that? Um, your location's kind of small. We can increase your location and get more clicks that way. I can open up the keyword targeting. The cost per click will go down. Um, but you'll get more clicks overall. Some of those might be good. Let's try some pure broad strategies. I give them options, Chris. Um, it's one I could go on and on about the persuasion things, uh, tactics, and I won't because I don't use tactics, even though people think when I say the word Chris, it's a tactic. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know about the book Win Bigly. I don't know about persuasion. I don't know about. Oh, you've never read that. No, no, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't know sure. about influence, Robert, Robert Cialdini, Cialdini. I don't, I don't know about these things. <laughs> So I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I know that multiple choice works. Chris, do you like that? Do you like that tactic? Yeah. Not doing open-ended, yeah. just saying, okay, this is what you want. This is what you're asking. Okay, this is how we can handle it. Here's my recommendation. But beyond my recommendation, we have these other options. What option do you want? Do you like that? Yeah. Do you take that? Absolutely. I do it all, I do it all the time. Oh, I right. tell clients. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 when they say, hey, um, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to get more conversions. I show them what inhibits them from getting more conversions. Is that, hey, listen, George, you have a 30% conversion rate. You just made me add 15 more states on your crappy little service. And I'm having to stretch this butter across 14 pieces of toast. And now nobody tastes, tastes the butter. I say that in a nice way. But, uh, you know, that's, yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. So I, I hope that, I hope, uh, guys, let us know. You know, we love to hear stories about how this stuff is helpful, especially I love to hear stories about how our discussion has helped, you know, you establish your own business and get started on your own and, and, and get out from underneath the thumb of, you know, some, the man out there. So, um, you know, I, I hope this is useful for you guys. We really do this out of a project of love because it's, uh, you know, we don't expect for this campaign, I don't expect to get a bunch of new clients. This is not going to be the episode, oh, episode that gets me a new client. Yeah. 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 This we're, is we're not just what here, we're just uh, hearing this question over and over when you guys contact us. How does it work? How do you do more than one account? I'm I'm swamped. And you guys are telling me you're swamped with six accounts. And I'm going, you're swamped at six. Uh -oh. Like, let's go here. Like, there's a way to fix this. So you can do many more <laughs> yeah. than that. So anyway, yeah. we hope this helps. If you have specific questions, we have another podcast, the PPC questions and answer show. People write in. We answer their questions on the air. The show comes out every weekday, Monday through Friday. So if you have any questions, ask us all your questions and we'll answer them on the show. And that show is also now taking on phone calls. So you guys can call in and we'll play your question on the air. And those are prioritized because we like those. So if you want to get your question answered first, call in. All the information is at Wikipedia. But all the information <laughs> for this show specifically <laughs> is at PageSearchPodcast.com <laughs> on the contact page. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening. Chris, I appreciate you being here. We got a, a beautiful podcast going. So this great on-air chemistry, let's take it off the air. Let's stop fighting with each other. Let's stop yeah. declining each other's calls. Let's stop accusing mm -hmm. each other of things. Let's stop insulting each other. Let's yes. let's bring this love on the air, off the air, and be friends Together. again. Together forever oh, yeah. no, i'm just kidding everybody hashtag hard this what they don't know is this podcast goes on for another hour basically <laughs> as we cannot get in we like stretch an it out buffet of beef. <laughs> so with that said i'm going to end the show now so thanks for listening guys thanks for reviewing and sharing and we'll be here every monday until the end of times on the paid search podcast